How's it going guys? So today I want to talk about 10 of the features and tools that I use all the time in Blender. Uh, I think Blender probably at this one has thousands of them um, and you can get lost in all of them. But I want to talk about my 10 favorite that I'm using now. I'll probably make this a series as you know what I do changes throughout, but that's what we're going to talk about today. Now really quickly, my November sale, 25% off all my products started on November 1st and that makes all of my products 25% off throughout the entirety of November. So if you want to get real-time materials, my shading course, or my motion graphics course, 25% off, you can get that linked in the bio. Use the code D3NOVEMBER. Now this first cool little tool um, requires the beta build of 3.4. I'll link in the description where you can get that. Also, if my voice sounds weird or it gets worse during the video, I've been dealing with the flu. So it's going to be a little weird, but we still got to make videos. So. So it's a fun little geometry notes thing and you can turn volume into a mesh. And so what I'll do is I'll delete all of this and we're going to get the volume cube, which again, you can only get in the beta build of this. So you have this volume cube and then you can do volume to mesh. Boom. Now you have that and you can kind of goof with it if you get something like a color ramp and a noise texture. And if you just kind of bring that in, that is going to break it up. And then you can subdivide it here. So now you have this really cool little weird thing. And then you can go to say 4D on your texture and you can animate it like that. And you could do a lot of other weird things with it. And I really love this because the idea of this feature expanding and becoming more editable and um, just adding it to maybe say text or stuff like that is very exciting to uh, think about. So I love this tool. Now I love decimate. So we have this hand right here. And what I'm gonna do is just go to the modifiers and add a decimate modifier right here. And what that's gonna do, if you've never used it, is take your mesh to uh, from this kind of density and bring it down. And there's a lot of value in that, say if you need to optimize or all. But what I love is kind of turning this into something stylistic. So say we can, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shade flat. And what you can do is if you're really into kind of 80s styles, of 3D, you can take that and then throw a wireframe on it and then accentuate that there. And now you have just kind of this kind of 80s looking, you make that neon and all that and uh, rotate it. But now you have this. Now the, the, the possibilities of taking things and making them look crazy is very fun. Uh, you can even have this one called planar and that's going to take all the uh, curved parts of your mesh and try to make them as flat as possible. And that is going to do things on its own. And you could use Decimate as a building block to cooler things later on. So if I smooth this out, I bring that repeat and then add a wireframe. Now you have something very, very weird. Uh, so if, you're, if you like to use uh, modifiers in a more creative sense, there's a lot of possibilities here just with the Decimate modifier. All right, constraints. You may have seen me use constraints here in the channel before. I actually use constraints for this animation right here. Uh, and what it allows you to do is it allows you to take something like a curve and an object and then you go to the constraint sections. You have all of these different constraints. I actually use constraints to create camera rigs where a camera is going in a circle but the camera is also locked into position looking at one thing. So you can use constraints for that. Uh, and the most simple way to use constraints is you have, a, you know, have some geometry and you have a curve and then you go to follow path, select that path and now he goes around that path. And you can really take this concept and make it very, very complicated uh, and make some really cool, really unique motion graphics with it. All right, this next one is going to sound like a self-promotion, uh, but in this case, it's not because I do use this add-on every time I use Blender and it's real-time materials. I promise uh, I really do use it all the time. It's almost like I made it for myself. Uh, but if you haven't heard of it, it is a pack of over 200 materials. What you can do is say like, hey, I need a simple ground material for this. I don't have the time to really use the nodes. So I'm going to go to the uh, the basics here, pick a basic plastic and apply it to there. And we already have some interesting look and then say, hey, let's make it yellow, make it nice and bright, or we can make it much darker and make it look gross, uh, but that's gross. And then you can take this guy and say like, all right, I want to put a different material in there. Terrazzo is a really nice one. And so we can may maybe pick this gray. And now we have this terrazzo material and I'll change the overall scale to like 10 and then change one of these colors to like that. Uh, so that's the real time materials pack. It's got a lot of cool stuff. I really love the paint section. So say I want to make this ground, maybe uh, this paint. I really love this one. 
Now you have this chipped paint as the ground. Uh, but it, th there's a lot of really cool things to it. And uh, even like the, uh, the cloth and the carbon fiber. But a lot of cool stuff there. But let's, uh, let's move on to the next. All right, so this next one is called Mesh to Curve. And it is a process within geometry nodes. And I really love it. So uh, in my, in the, way I, the way I like to look at it is it's a, it's a better wireframe but with uh, one flaw. So say I have this icosphere within geometry nodes, and I'm gonna go mesh to curve. So we have a mesh to curve node, plop it there, and it turns it into a curve. And the power in that is we can go curve, curve to mesh, nothing changes. And what you can do is you can get a curve circle, and to you, you can use that curve circle as the radius of how thick you want this wireframe to be. And here's why I say it's a better wireframe just with one flaw. My biggest gripe with the wireframe originally is if you just put it on there, notice that it is planar. It basically just uses three faces to create it, and there's no button to make it round. Um, but this does it right here. But the only issue is we have this goof up. It doesn't fill, doesn't smooth, and it's kind of ugly. So I usually find ways to cover it. Uh, this is filled. So I use it in different examples where it is appropriate. Uh, but I much prefer a round wireframe rather than a three-sided wireframe. All right, dual mesh. What is it? So let's just get like a simple icosphere here in geometry nodes. And you have this kind of geometry here. It's triangular. So what you can do is take the dual mesh node, plop it there, and now it becomes a soccer ball. It creates a dual mesh. And it's very, very cool. It's, uh, I love this kind of weird kind of geometry. But what you can also do is take a plane and uh, triangulate it because it won't do it on square faces. And uh, what you can do is throw the dual mesh right there and it creates this really cool pattern. And uh, so you can take any, any kind of uh, model that has quads or triangles and triangulate it if it's uh, on quads and then throw the dual mesh node on there and it is going to create this really, really cool pattern that you can then take and do a lot of other really cool things with. In fact, my wallpaper here uses it so you can see that dual mesh process. Then I did all this craziness uh, to make it look really nice. All right, the next one is a very simple one. It's called G for grab, G on your keyboard. So what I can do is I can hit G and freehand move this around. But also say I have all these nodes and I just wanna move one, grab it and hit G. But what's really useful is you can highlight a group of nodes and move them all together at the same time by hitting G. And that uh, was a game changer for me uh, when I was trying to like organize a bunch of nodes. If you've been playing with nodes a lot, you know this makes everything so easy. All right, the next one is called the Node Wrangler. It is an a, uh, it is the add-on. So if you type in Node, Node Wrangler right here. And what you can do is say I have this node set up here, just a color ramp and a noise texture plugged into the base color and you have all that. Well, you need to have two nodes to make sure you can map it and it maps correctly. And so what I always do here on the channel is hit Control T with the Node Wrangler add-on and I just plug in my object. And by hitting Control T, you get your texture coordinate and your mapping very easily and very quickly. Uh, but it doesn't just do that. Uh, on the in the blender manual it is a default blender add-on you don't have to buy it you don't have to download it uh, they give you a lot I mean a lot of shortcuts uh, you know you have things like uh, merge and add multiply subtract just with these shortcuts right here merge using alpha over node control alt zero uh, batch change blend math operation change mix factor I mean swap links right here that's one that one's super useful alt s I mean this add-on is incredibly useful and I use it all the time. All right, another geometry nodes thing. I may have picked too many geometry nodes things, but I use it all the time. This one's called Instance on Points. Uh, I love it for modeling with the type of motion graphics I like to do. It's incredibly useful for me. If you like doing motion graphics, it'll be very useful to you. So I have an icosphere here and my points are these guys right here. Those are my points. So what I can do I could just do an instance on points right there. It disappears. And then I can go, hey, let's go get an icosphere. And I plug it into instance. Now, all of these guys have shown up on those points. And if you want your guide to come back, you can get a join geometry, plug it there. Uh, but now you have all these objects 
that are on each of the points of your tool here, and I um, mean your object. And you can imagine how useful that is. And you can do a mesh to curve and create the wireframes here and create something really interesting and really cool. Uh, but it works on any kind of geometry. You can turn it into like a point cloud or whatever. Uh, but it's very cool. I use it a lot. If you've been use if you've been watching the channel, you know I've been using it a lot. Uh, and it's very cool, and I love it. I use it all the time. Now, this last one is, in my opinion, one of the most important things as an animator you should learn to use, and it's the graph editor. So I just have a simple animation of this guy doing that. But hey, let's head over to the graph editor. So I'm going to go to the animation tab, and right here you can use this guy and turn it into the graph editor. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this object, and now we have this right here. So I'll stretch it out. This is the animation. It speeds up and slows down. And so what I can do is I can take this tool right here, I can click on that, and stretch it out, and watch how that changes the, the uh, movement. So I'm going to hit Control Z. See that? And if I just drag this keyframe out to speed up the beginning, look how much better that is, much more interesting. Uh, you can go insane with it. Uh, I've created some videos about the graph editor before. I use it all the time. I love it. So there you guys go. That is 10 of some of my most used tools and features in Blender. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you learned some stuff from this. Again, check out my sale, 25% off. You can hit the link in the description. And thank you guys for watching.